So what is it that I have against Nano? What is my problem with the Nano text editor? People really want me to answer this question. This is something that has been constantly asked over the years of me doing this YouTube channel. For one thing, I spend a lot of time covering really extensible text editors like Vim and Emacs. And I really never talk about Nano. When I do talk about Nano, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily talk about Nano in a good light, right? <laughs> and a lot of people are like, hey man, what is it? What is it that you have against Nano? Why do you hate Nano so much? Where, where does all this built-in dislike for Nano come from? And you know, I, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. These people that imagine that I hate Nano, they're not imagining it. I really do hate Nano as a text editor. Now, that, that being said, there's there's nothing wrong with you using Nano as your text editor. If you want to use Nano, keep using it, right? You use the software you want to use. I use the software that I want to use. We all make these personal choices as far as the software we choose to use. And if Nano is working for you, keep using it. For me, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I've got some things against Nano that really bug the hell out of me. Probably my biggest issue with Nano is with any text editor, whether it be Nano, Vim, Emacs, it really doesn't matter. To get the most out of any text editor, you really need to learn all the built-in functionality of that editor. You need to learn all the already assigned key bindings to that editor, right, to get the most out of it, to learn how to really navigate around a document quickly and make those edits, you know, much faster to really speed up that process. You need to learn the key bindings and Nano has a lot of key bindings already assigned to it. Many of you Nano users actually don't realize just how many key bindings there are in Nano. There's a, an extensive list of key bindings available to you. Matter of fact, I I should actually link to like a nano cheat sheet of all the key bindings that are built into it. There's a lot, right? So there's a learning curve to nano, just like there is with Vim, just like there is in Emacs. You have a lot of learning to do up front. You need to learn all those key bindings. You need to get used to all those key presses, those strokes, right? And here's the thing with nano, that learning curve to learn all of that stuff, it's not worth it because nano at the end of the day, there is only so powerful. There's only so much you can do with a very basic, plain text editor like Nano, where with Vim and Emacs, yes, there's a huge learning curve. You got to learn all these key bindings. You got to learn oh, the plugin system. You may have to learn how to write in a Vim script or Lua or Emacs list. If you're using Emacs, you're going to have to learn some stuff, but it's worth it in the end because of what those editors ultimately can do, what they can become with you being knowledgeable and how they're scripted and you know with nano there's a learning curve to nano and that learning curve just isn't worth it also with nano just like with vim and emacs there's some basic plugin functionality available you know there's some, a few nano plugins there's there's a config file you've got your nano rc file right that you can play around with you know change some settings but that at the end of the day there's only so much extending of nano you can do the sky is the limit with Vim and Emacs as far as extensions and what you can turn those text editors into. Emacs can practically become a full IDE. Hell, Emacs can practically become its own desktop environment. You can extend it to that kind of capability. Where Nano, at the end of the day, is really just a very basic plain text editor. There's not a lot of plugins out there. There's just a few. You can only do so much with the config file. Even turning on things like basic syntax highlighting and things like that. You know, it's, it's just not great. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have the kind of capabilities that both Vim and Emacs, for example, have. So really, that's my only gripe is when I get into Nano and try to do anything in Nano, it's got these weird set of key bindings that are not standard. It's a, a complete different set of key bindings than you would use in something like Vim or in Emacs or even plain text editors like Gedit or Kate, right? Nano has its own weird set of key bindings that you have to learn. It's just not worth it. That's, that's really my complaint is it's uncomfortable to use and I don't want to learn it. I don't want to waste time learning it just because at the end of the day, I just don't think that that is time well spent. For me, Nano is not a in-game text editor, right? That's that's not ultimately where you want to end up. 
as far as your text editing software of choice, right? I think where you want to end up is something like Vim or Emacs. Nano, what Nano is really good for and what I might would use Nano on occasion for is if I need to make a quick edit, a really quick, simple edit to a config file on my system or a machine I remote into, SSH into a machine, and maybe Nano is the only editor on that server. And I don't want to install another editor on that server just to make a really quick five second edit to one config file, right? I'll just use Nano for that. Why not? I, I can make it work for something really simple. If I'm not, you know, if, if it's a situation where I don't have to spend a significant amount of time in an editor, Nano's fine for those tasks, but where Nano really falls apart is if you're going to do a ton of writing, a ton of programming, a ton of scripting, creative writing, whatever it happens to be, you're writing your, your latest novel, right? Nano is definitely not the best tool for a job like that. That is where tools like Vim and Emacs and those really extensible text editors, that's where they shine because they have so much more functionality available for you for whatever task you're doing. You, they've got all these thousands of plugins available to help you programmers and developers or you creative writers or whatever it happens to be that you need that text editor for. They can make that happen where Nano at the end of the day is just a very basic piece of software. And where some of my obvious dislike of Nano comes into play. You guys sometimes see it on camera. You know, I spent so many years using Vim and Emacs. You know, I find Nano, it's just, it's so damn frustrating when I end up in Nano on a, in a virtual machine, if I'm checking out a Linux distribution and Nano's the only editor on it or, or whatever it happens to be. If I end up in Nano for some reason, then I have to try to figure out the key bindings for Nano. And again, Nano's got this weird set of key bindings that nothing else uses. It's a complete set of key bindings, unlike any other program you've ever used. And that's, that's part of my hatred of Nano. You know, I have nothing against, you know, GNU, Nano, the text editor. Yeah. Again, you guys that want to use it, you can. For me, every time I end up in it, you know, that, that frustration builds. It's because I'm a fish out of water. At the end of the day, I'm just not used to it. And that's the problem. A good analogy is when I end up in Nano compared to, you know, Vim or Emacs, you know, when I'm in Nano, it's almost like I'm typing with both of my hands tied behind my back, right? Like that's how clunky and slow and frustrating I find Nano. So I hope that answers some of your guys' questions as far as what I have against Nano, right? But some of you guys are even asking questions like, what do I have against Nano users? I've got nothing against Nano users. I don't care what piece of software you choose to use, just like you really shouldn't care what piece of software I choose to use, right? You need to worry about yourself, right? If you're worried about what other people are doing, You've got some issues to work out. Any sane and rational person really isn't concerned about what somebody else is doing with their life. Right? So I have no problems with nano users. And when I talk about nano in a negative light, I'm not talking about people using nano. Right? Some people think when I say a piece of software is not right for me, I dislike a piece of software, whatever it happens to be, that I'm somehow taking a shot at the people that use that piece of software and like using that piece of software. That's not the case at all. I'm just speaking my personal opinion. And many of you guys want my opinions on this stuff. So I'm happy to give them, to, you know, like on this video, I'm very straightforward and honest. I just don't like Nano. And it's not, you know, that you shouldn't like Nano. Nano's just not the right tool for me for 99% of what I do with my text editing. Peace, guys.